Everyone's looking for an email provider that actually respects their privacy, and Mailbox.org keeps popping up as this German-engineered solution that promises secure email for just one euro per month. I've been testing it for weeks now, and honestly, it's both more impressive and more frustrating than I expected. <clears throat> so here's the deal with Mailbox.org. This isn't your typical email service trying to harvest your data for ad revenue. These are Germans who take privacy seriously with servers locked down in Germany under some of the strictest data protection laws in the world. They've been around since 2014, which in email provider years means they're not some fly-by-night startup that might disappear with your data. Let's talk money first, because that one euro price tag is what gets everyone's attention. For one euro per month, you get two gigs of email storage and three alias addresses. That's genuinely cheap, but here's what nobody tells you up front. That two gigs fills up faster than you'd think if you're someone who keeps attachments or has years of email history. I hit the limit within a few months of normal use. The step up is their standard plan at three euros monthly, which bumps you to five gigabytes of email storage plus five gigabytes of cloud storage. And this is where things get interesting. You're not just getting email here. You're getting a full productivity suite. We're talking calendar, address book, online office tools that actually work, video conferencing, and cloud storage for three euros. That's honestly impressive value when you compare it to what Google or Microsoft charge for similar features. Their premium plan at nine euros gives you 25 gigs of email storage, 50 gigs of cloud storage, and 250 aliases, which is overkill for most people, but perfect if you're running a small business or you're one of those people who creates a unique email address for every service. Now, let's get into what actually using mailbox.org feels like, because this is where things get real. The web interface is, well, functional. It's not going to win any design awards. It feels like it was built by engineers who prioritized security over aesthetics, which honestly, it probably was. The interface works, it's reasonably fast, but it definitely has that slightly clunky European software vibe that some people love and others find off-putting. Here's what surprised me though. The mobile experience is actually solid. They support standard protocols like IMAP and CalDAV, which means your iPhone or Android email app works perfectly with it. I set it up in Apple Mail in about 30 seconds and everything synced beautifully. Calendar appointments, contacts, the whole thing just worked. The security features are where mailbox.org really shines and this is probably why you're considering them in the first place. They offer end-to-end -end encryption through PGP which is great if you know how to use it. But here's the catch, and this is important. PGP doesn't encrypt subject lines or metadata. So while your message content is locked down, anyone monitoring your traffic can still see who you're emailing and when. They also do this thing where they scan for viruses and spam, which means your emails do get processed on their servers before encryption. Some privacy purists aren't happy about this, but honestly, most people prefer having spam filtered out rather than dealing with it manually. The German location is both a strength and a limitation. Strong privacy laws protect your data, but it also means you're dealing with German business practices. Customer support is competent but formal. Response times can be slow, and some features feel very European in their implementation. <laughs> One thing that genuinely impressed me is their commitment to green energy. Their servers run on 100% renewable energy, which matters if environmental impact factors into your decision making. It's a nice touch that most email providers don't even think about. But let's talk about the downsides because there are some. The web interface, while functional, feels dated compared to Gmail or even Outlook. If you're used to modern, slick interfaces, this might feel like a step backward. The search functionality is particularly weak. Finding old emails becomes a real chore if you have years of history. The calendar and office suite, while included, are pretty basic. They work for simple document editing and basic scheduling, but don't expect the advanced features you'd get from Google Workspace or Microsoft 365. It's more like having LibreOffice in your browser, which is fine for basic tasks, but limiting for power users. Migration can be a pain too. While they support importing from other email providers, the process isn't as smooth as it could be. I had some issues with folder structures not transferring correctly and contact import required some manual cleanup. Here's something that might be a deal breaker for some people. Mailbox.org doesn't offer unlimited storage. In a world where Google gives you 15 gigabytes free, and most people never think about email storage limits, having to manage your mailbox size feels archaic. You'll need to actually delete old emails or pay for more storage. The spam filtering is generally good, but it's not as sophisticated as Gmail's machine learning approach. 
you'll catch more spam in your inbox, and legitimate emails occasionally end up in spam folders. It's manageable, but it requires more active management than most people are used to. So, who is Mailbox.org actually for? If you're someone who values privacy over convenience, if you don't mind paying for email service, and if you prefer supporting a company that isn't trying to monetize your personal data, then Mailbox.org makes a lot of sense. It's particularly good for Europeans who want to keep their data in European jurisdiction. It's also solid for small businesses that need basic productivity tools without the complexity and cost of enterprise solutions. The combination of email, calendar, and office tools at three euros per month is genuinely competitive. But if you're deeply embedded in the Google or Microsoft ecosystem, if you need advanced search and AI features, or if you just want your email to work seamlessly without thinking about it, then mailbox.org might feel like too much work. Here's my honest take after weeks of daily use. Mailbox.org is a solid, privacy-focused email service that does exactly what it promises. It's not flashy, it's not loaded with cutting-edge features, but it's reliable, secure, and reasonably priced. <laughs> the German engineering shows in both the security implementation and the slightly rigid user experience. If you're tired of being the product instead of the customer, if you want email that respects your privacy without breaking the bank, Mailbox.org is worth the 30-day free trial. Just go in with realistic expectations about the interface and features. You're trading some convenience for privacy and data ownership. And for many people, that's a trade worth making. One more thing worth mentioning, their two-factor authentication setup is actually pretty solid. They support both app-based authentication and hardware keys, which is more than most email providers offer. I appreciate that they make security optional, but accessible. You're not forced into complicated setups, but the tools are there if you want them. The company also has this refreshingly straightforward approach to transparency. Their privacy policy is actually readable, written in plain language instead of legal jargon, designed to confuse you. When you're dealing with your personal communications, that kind of honesty matters. The bottom line is this. Mailbox.org isn't trying to be everything to everyone. It's a focused, privacy-first email service that does the basics very well. In a world where most email providers are racing to add AI features and collect more data, sometimes boring and secure is exactly what you need. If this helped you out, hit like and subscribe. I break down the latest and most talked about tools every week across finance, marketing, software, design, basically any niche you care about. Check out the newest review here or hit the playlist if you're still comparing. But hey, what's your take? Is this one a win or would you pass? Drop a comment. I'm always curious what real users think.